welcome to another example of operation scheduling where we will see how to sequence n jobs on m machines find an optimal sequence for the following sequencing problem of four jobs and five machines so one two three and four are the four jobs which need to be processed on five machines m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 each of these jobs has to be processed first on m1 then on m2 then on m3 then on m4 and then on m5 now we have also been given the time for processing each of these jobs on each of these machines. For example, job number one takes six hours to be processed on machine M1, takes four hours to be processed on machine M2, takes one hour to be processed on machine M3, takes two hours to be processed on machine M4, and takes eight hours to be processed on machine M5. Similarly, we have been given the time for processing these jobs on these machines for job number two, three and four. So now what we have to find out is which job should be processed first, which job should be processed second and so on. So that the overall processing time is reduced or the overall processing time is minimized. Also, we have to find what is the total elapsed time or what is the total processing time. Now, let's first find out whether we can use the Johnson's rule to sequence these jobs. Now, in order to use Johnson's rule, there are two conditions which need to be met. If either one of the conditions is met, or both the conditions are met, then we can use Johnson's method for sequencing n jobs on m machines. However, if none of those two conditions are met, then we cannot proceed with Johnson's method. So the first condition is, the minimum processing time on machine M1 should be greater than or equal to the maximum processing time on machines M2, M3 and so on till M, M minus 1. So minimum processing time on machine M1 should be greater than or equal to the maximum processing time on machines M2, M3 and so on till M, M minus 1. Now in our case the small m is 5. So m, m minus 1 is m and then 5 minus 1 which is 4. So let's find out the minimum processing time on machine m1. So 6, 5, 4, 7. Minimum is 4. And now let's find out the maximum processing time on machines M2, M3 and M4. So basically when we are comparing in the first rule, we compare the first machine with the remaining machines except the last one. So M2, M3, M4. Now what is the maximum processing time? So I can see 5 here. And that is the maximum processing time. So the maximum processing time on M2, M3 and M4 is 5. So this condition is not met because 4 is not greater or equal to 5. Now let's evaluate the second condition. The second condition says that the minimum processing time on machine MM that is the last machine should be greater than or equal to the maximum processing time on machines M2, M3 and so on till M, 
m minus 1 and in our case m m minus 1 is m 4 so in this rule first we are taking the minimum processing time for the last machine which is m5 so let's see the minimum processing time is 5 and then we are comparing it with the maximum processing time of all the remaining machines except the first machine so we have to find out the maximum processing time for m2 m3 and m4 so the maximum processing time for m2 m3 and m4 is 5 hours so here 5 is equal to 5 so this condition is met so now since one of the conditions is fulfilled we can proceed with using the Johnson's method however first we have to convert this example into an example of sequencing n jobs on two machines so we'll have two hypothetical machines x and y so we have jobs 1 2 3 and 4 and we'll have machines x and y now how do we find out the processing time on the hypothetical machine x and the hypothetical machine y so the processing time for each of the jobs on the hypothetical machine x will be the addition of the processing time of that job on all the machines except the last machine so m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 and how do we find the processing time on the hypothetical machine y so the processing time for each of the jobs on y will be the sum of all the processing times except the first machine so for job number one processing time on x will be 6 plus 4 10 plus 1 11 plus 2 13 and on y it will be 4 plus 1 5 plus 2 7 plus 8 15 For job number 2, for x it will be 5 plus 5, 10 plus 3, 13 plus 4, 17. And for y it will be 5 plus 3, 8 plus 4, 12 plus 9, 21. Now for job number 3, for x, 4 plus 3, 7 plus 4, 11 plus 5 16 and for job number 3 on y 3 plus 4 7 plus 7 14 plus 5 19 for job number 4 on x 7 plus 2 9 plus 2 11 plus 1 12 and for job number 4 on y 2 plus 2 4 plus 1 5 plus 5 10 so now this becomes a case of sequencing n jobs on two machines so let's find out the best sequence for processing these jobs now Johnson's method for sequencing n jobs on two machines says that first find out the shortest processing time if the shortest processing time is on machine X then sequence it in the beginning however if the shortest processing time is on machine Y that is the second machine then sequence it towards the end of the sequence so let's first find out what is the shortest processing time so here the shortest processing time is 10 and since it is on the second machine we'll sequence job number four at the end of the sequence so we'll put it at the end and let's cut this line because we have already sequenced it 
Now let's again find out the shortest processing time, which is 13. And since it is on the first machine, which is X, we will sequence it at the beginning of the sequence. Let's cut this line as well. Now the next shortest processing time is 16. And since it is on the first machine, we will sequence it towards the beginning. So after 1, we will put 3. We can cut this line. And the last job is job number 2. So the sequence is 1, 3, 2, 4. So basically what this means is that if we process job number 1 first, job number 3 second, job number 2 third, and job number 4 in the end, then we can minimize the overall processing time. So let us find out the overall processing time if we process these jobs in this sequence. Now in order to find out the total processing time, we have to revert back to the original problem which has these five machines and the four jobs listed. And then we have to find out the in and out times for each of the jobs on each of these machines. So let us find that out. So first we have to process job number one. Now since all the machines are available to process any of the jobs, job number one can go into M1 at the 0th hour and it takes six hours to be processed there so it will be out on the sixth hour. At that point it can go into M2 and it takes four hours to be processed on machine M2 so it will be out on the tenth hour. At that point it can go into M3 and it takes one hour to be processed there so it will be out on the eleventh hour. At that point it can go into M4 and it takes two hours to be processed there so it will be out on the thirteenth hour and at the 13th hour it can go into M5 and it takes 8 hours there so it will be out on the 21st hour. So next we'll process job number 3. Now job number 3 can go into M1 at the 6th hour and it takes 4 hours to be processed on M1 so 6 plus 4 is 10. At the 10th hour job number 3 can go into M2 and it takes three hours there so it will be out on the 13th hour at that point it can go into m3 and it takes four hours there so it will be out on the 17th hour at that point it can go into m4 and job number three takes five hours on m4 so it'll be out on the 22nd hour now at that point it can go into m5 and it takes 7 hours there, so it will be out on the 29th hour. Next we have to process job number 2. So job number 2 can go into M1 at the 10th hour. And it takes 5 hours there, so it will be out on the 15th hour. At 15th hour M2 is available. So job number 2 can go into M2 at the 15th hour. And it takes 5 hours there, so it will be out on the 20th hour. At that point it can go into M3. And job number 2 takes 3 hours on M3, so it will be out on the 23rd hour. At that point it can go into M4. And it takes 4 hours there, so it will be out on the 27th hour. But at 27th hour, M5 is busy processing job number 3. So M5 is done with job number 3 on the 29th hour. So job number 2 can go into M5 at the 29th hour. And job number 2 takes 9 hours on M5. So it will be done at the 38th hour. Next we have to process job number 4. So job number 4 can go into M1 at the 15th hour and it takes 
seven hours there so it will be out on the 22nd hour at that point it can go into m2 and it takes two hours there so it will be out on the 24th hour at that point it can go into m3 and it again takes two hours there so it will be out on the 26th hour but at the 26th hour m4 is busy processing job number two so m4 is available only at the 27th hour so at that time m4 can start processing job number four and job number four takes one hour on machine m4 so it will be out on the 28th hour but m5 is busy processing job number two till the 38th hour so job number 4 can start on M5 at the 38th hour and it is going to take 5 hours there so it will be done at the 43rd hour. So in all the total elapsed time will be 43 hours if we follow the sequence 1, 3, 2, 